In this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step instructions for how to make the blue moon image that I showed as the first example in my workshop on making images with impact. I've opened all three images that we're going to use to construct this image. Uh, the first one here you see is called Blue Moon 1. It's basically the scene. Uh, the second image is called Blue Moon 2 is uh, a second image shot maybe 20 minutes after that first one but with a longer lens so that the moon appears larger. And then the third image that we'll use is called Blue Moon 3 and it's also an image shot you know maybe 20 minutes before that first image uh, just as the moon is rising and the sun is setting. Alright so we'll have to get all three or parts of all three of these images and into the same Photoshop document and we'll use Blue Moon 1 here as the document where we'll collect all of the images to construct the Blue Moon image. So let's go do that. Uh, we'll click on the Blue Moon 2 image. Now we want to make uh, a copy or duplicate of uh, this image into the Blue Moon 1 document, but we really don't want the whole image. We just want the moon out of this one. So we need to make um, a selection and mask uh, of just the moon here. Now lots of ways to do this, but in this image if I just simply click on the Quick Select tool on the left side there, and then I click on that Select Subject button at the top of the screen. Photoshop will guess on what the subject of the image is. It's pretty clear here, it's the moon. <laughs> right? So it's done a nice selection of just the moon. If I tap the letter Q key to go into quick mask mode, we can see it's done a really fine job. We might improve it just a little bit by tapping that select and mask button at the top of the screen, upping the radius a couple of pixels. Uh, that should do it. We'll click OK. That's just going to fine tune that edge a little bit. I'm going to click that button at the bottom of the layer stack, add a mask, which is simply going to save the current selection as a mask to the current layer. There's only one layer, so when I click that, it saves it. It's it's also we can see it also renamed that layer from background to layer 0. We may want to uh, rename that layer moon just so when we put it together uh, with other layers in the Blue Moon 1 document, we know that this is the layer that has the moon on it. Okay, so now let's make a copy of this layer. I'll right-click on the moon layer there, and from the pop-up menu, I'll select Duplicate Layer. I get a little pop-up in the middle, the Duplicate Layer dialog, and if I just click OK here, I'll get another copy of this layer, but it'll be in this document. We really want the copy of the layer to go into the Blue Moon 1 document. So in the center of this pop-up window there's a document field with a pull-down. I'll click on the pull-down and it lists all of the open documents in Photoshop. I'll pick Blue Moon 1, click OK, and we see this document hasn't changed. Why? Well because we made the duplicate of this moon layer in the Blue Moon 1 document. So I'll click over to the Blue Moon 1 document. Sure enough, there is the moon layer there. Um, so I'll select the Move tool, click anywhere in the uh, layer and drag, and now we can position that, that moon right over the top of the old moon. All right, so we've got two of the three um, images together. We have to go get the third one. I'll click over to the Blue Moon 3 document, and here we see the picture of the young girl looking at the, the Blue Moon just rising on the horizon. It's a little harder to mask just the girl from this uh, image than it was getting the moon in the previous uh, document. So just to make this go quickly, I'm going to use this layer you see on the right called Girl 7324, because in that layer I've already done a nice careful mask of the girl. In the next video segment I'll show you how to make a nice careful mask, but just to keep this one quick and short, I'll just use the mask I've already created. Let me show you the mask. I'm going to option or alt click on that mask. There you can see I've got a nice mask of just uh, the girl. So I'm going to right click just the same thing I did before with the moon. I'll right click on that layer, pop up menu, I will select duplicate layer. Uh, then instead of making the duplicate in the Blue Moon 3 document, I want it in the Blue Moon 1 document and click OK. Now, again, nothing changed in this document because I didn't make the duplicate of the layer here. 
if we click over to the Blue Moon One document, there it is. I've got this layer called Girl 7324 on the top of the layer stack. If I just, I could just drag her um, to the place that I want her, but she's not facing the right way. I, I really need to flip her around. So rather than just use the Move tool, I'm going to use the free transform, which on the Mac is Command T. On the PC, that would be Control T. Um, I'll do that. I get a little outline of that layer. I'll right click inside there, and from the pop up man menu, select Flip Horizontal. So that flipped her around. We can't see her, so I'll hit Command or control zero to zoom out. Now I'll click anywhere inside that bounding box and drag that entire layer um, until I get the girl to the right spot. I can't quite position her exactly at, at this zoom level, so I'm going to hit command or control plus to zoom in a few clicks. I'll hold down the space bar. I'll drag the mouse. Okay, now I can see where she is. And again, I'm going to click and drag in that layer to put her right on top of that rock where I want her to be looking at the moon. Right there. Uh, Command or Control Zero to zoom out. And then I'll click on that checkbox at the top of the screen to accept the free transform. All right. We're making progress now. We've got the girl. We've got the moon. So now we've got the composition we want. Now we have to work on the tone. The girl is way too bright. We have to darken her down. We'll do that th the same way I always do tone adjustment is with a curves adjustment layer. So I'll click at the bottom of the layer stack, um, select curves, right in the middle of the menu there. And now I want to darken down the girl, but look what happens. When I start darkening down, it's darkening everything. Why? Because that's what an adjustment layer does. Darkens everything under beneath it. Uh, on the layer stack unless the adjustment is a clipping mask adjustment layer. So let's make this a clipping mask adjustment layer. Uh, create clipping mask. Okay, and that little arrow there on the adjustment layer is, is signaling that it's just the pixel layer below that's going to be adjusted here. Now as I adjust the the level there, we can see it's just affecting the girl. That's exactly what I want. Maybe just a tiny bit darker, something like maybe in there. I'm going to hit um, Command or Control Zero to zoom out. That's not bad. Now, let's see. Well, there's there's a couple of other tone adjustments we can make. One is is we'd like to get a little glow around the moon. Um, so what we're going to do now is we'll take that layer called Moon and we're going to move it to the very top of the layer stack. Let's get it way up there. I do that for two reasons. One is I'd like to adjust the overall tone of the image. In fact, let's do that now. Um, and since it's a tone adjustment, I'm going to use another curves adjustment. But the moon's already very bright. So I want to exclude the moon from uh, the adjustment of the tone of the overall image. So I'll take that adjustment layer and drag it down underneath the moon. So it'll affect everything below it on the layer stack, but the moon will be above it, so the moon won't be affected. All right, so now I'll take the white point on that curve. I'll drag it over. That's looking pretty nice right about there. So now we've got a, a brighter image. As we think about this, though, if the moon were illuminating this image, um, this side of the rock that's facing the camera wouldn't be illuminated. So we'd like to really take this brightening off that part of the image. Um, but since we have a layer mask on this curve, we can do that easily. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. In this case, white reveals the adjustment, black conceals the adjustment. The mask here is all white, so it's revealing the adjustment everywhere. So all we have to do is brush black paint onto the mask for this curve where the rock appears. So I'll get my paintbrush. I'll make sure it's got a nice soft edge. Let's make sure the hardness is zero. That's, it is. Uh, we'll make it just a little bigger, and we're going to brush black paint onto the mask for that adjustment. There we go. All right. So now as we turn the visibility of that adjustment on and off, we can see, in fact, yes, we're darkening or we're lightening the whole image, except for uh, the rock where we've masked out that adjustment, and for the moon, which is above the adjustment on the layer stack. All right. So... Oh yes, now we want to create some moon glow. So um, that's going to be a tone adjustment. So we're going to create another curve. Um, we want this curve to go underneath the moon uh, because we're going to lighten the sky, but not the moon itself, uh, right around the moon. 
um, we want to brighten it up but again we don't want to brighten the whole image we just want to brighten uh, the image around the moon now we already have a nice mask for the moon so let's start with that and modify that mask till it gives us what we want so I'm gonna copy that mask from the moon layer to this curves 3 layer in fact let's call this curves 3 moon glow just so we know what it's doing I'm gonna copy that mask so instead of just dragging and dropping I'm gonna hold down the option or alt key and then I'm gonna drag and drop that mask onto the moon glow do we want to replace the mask on the moon glow layer? Yes, it's just all white. So there we go, we've replaced it. Um, now we're not seeing any glow, why? Well, it's because the mask is restricting the glow to just where the moon is. If we turn off the moon, we can see, yep, it's brightening the sky right around there, but it's brightening it exactly where the moon is overlaying it. We like this mask to kind of get fuzzy and a little bigger near the edge. Well, I can do that by clicking on the mask, clicking on the properties, or looking at the properties window rather at the top right of the screen and you see that slider that says feather watch what happens when I slide that feather slider to the right uh, let's do it more okay now did, did you see there it made a big difference as I passed you know nine pixels and went up suddenly it started to glow very nicely let's turn the moon back on um, let's accentuate that glow a little more. I'll click on the uh, on the curve icon there and I'll take the white point and slide it in. Do you see the glow starting to come? Um, let's feather the mask a little more. I'll properties, feather. So we'll feather it out a little more. There, now we're getting some nice moon glow <laughs> if I uh, turn on and off the visibility of that moon glow layer. Now we've got uh, a very nice glow around the moon. So that's about it for part of the rendering we'll do in this video. In terms of you know putting all the pieces together, doing the selective relighting and so forth, what you've seen here really captures it. So I hope that all made sense to you. If it didn't, you know, go back and review it because uh, what we used here were just the basic concepts of layers, layer masks, and adjustment layers. And that wraps up this segment.